So in this video, I want to talk about the process of extravasation. This refers to the movement of white blood cells from the capillaries into the tissue surrounding them. The first example that I want to discuss is a neutrophil that wants to leave the bloodstream to get to the site of infection. And as you know, neutrophils are always on call. They are circulating in the blood, and once the macrophage calls them, they need to leave the bloodstream to get to the site of infection. So there are always four steps happening to get the neutrophil out of the blood. First, the neutrophil has to roll along the endothelial lining, so it has to slow down. Then it gets activated, that's the second step. This results in a very tight interaction between the endothelial cell and the neutrophil. And then finally, the neutrophil can migrate through the endothelial cells and can get into the, the tissue. So the first interaction is a very loose interaction which facilitates this rolling. And it's always going to be an interaction between E selectin on the endothelial cell. So it's an E for the endothelial cell, E selectin with a mucin cam. And how you can remember that is, well, the E stands for endothelial cell, so you know this molecule is expressed on the endothelial cell. And it's kind of the endothelial cell selects who is going to extravasate. And so how do you want to appear when you want to be selected? Well, this mucin can is a very highly glycosylated protein, so very sugary, very sweet. So you want to be sweet if you want to be selected. So that kind of can help you to remember this interaction between E-selectin and mucin cam, this loose interaction that facilitates the rolling. But note that the E-selectin is not constitutively expressed on the endothelial cells. So there needs to be an infection, there needs to be something going on, there needs to be TNF-R1 produced that stimulates these endothelial cells to start expressing those sticky molecules. In contrast, mucin camp, so this glycosylated sugary molecule that's going to interact with E-selectin, is expressed on any neutrophil. So the next step is activation of the neutrophil that will result in the expression of other sticky molecules on the neutrophil that allow a very tight interaction. And so the activation is facilitated by um, CXCL8, which is produced by macrophages, but also later in an inflammatory express by the endothelial cells. And we know that CXCL8 receptors are present on neutrophils and this allows then the activation of the neutrophil, which results in expression of integrins. So the integrins are these very sticky molecules that allow a very tight interaction between the neutrophil and the endothelial cell. And there's always an interaction between the an integrin with a so-called IgCam. IgCam is a family of molecules, and the specific molecule that is expressed on endothelial cells is an iCam. So there's an interaction between LFA1 and iCam, and this is very tight. And, and this allows the neutrophil then to really migrate into the tissue. So we have now discussed how a neutrophil gets to the site of infection. But as I mentioned in the beginning, extravasation is a general process of a white blood cell that needs to leave the blood to get to the tissue. And there's always going to be those four steps, rolling, activation, adhesion, and migration. And for the rolling, this is this loose interaction. There's always going to be a selecting binding to a mucin cam. For the activation, there's always some chemokine produced that binds into the chemokine receptor. For adhesion, there's always going to be one integrin that binds to an Ig cam. And for the migration, there's more chemokines that then really going to get the, the white blood cell into the tissue. So this is just are the steps that are for granted for any extravasation process. So we have now discussed how a neutrophil gets to the site of infection, and these are the molecules that are involved on the neutrophil site, and these are the molecules that are involved on the endothelial cell. And now we are going to talk about other examples where a white blood cell needs to leave the bloodstream to get into a tissue. And the next example that I want to discuss is an effector T cell, 
we know that the naive T cells are hanging around in the lymph nodes. And once they find um, an antigen presenting cell that recognizes their T cell receptor, they clonally expand and then they're going to be an eff effector T cells. And those effector T cells, either a T helper or a T killer cell, needs to leave the lymph node while the efferent lymphatic vessel is going to be found in the bloodstream and then wants to get to the site of infection to help clear the infection. But how does it do so? Well, it's a very, very similar process than we just discussed for the neutrophil. The molecules are just slightly different. So we have, again, also mucin cam on the effector T cell. It's not expressed on the naive T cell, but it's going to be expressed on the effector T cell. And this sugary molecule is going to be selected by the E cell lactin of the endothelial cell. The chemokine is the same. But now for this tight interaction, we have another integrin that interacts with a different Ig cam on the endothelial cell. So in the case of an effector T cell, they express VLA4 in high levels, and they will then interact and adhere with WeCam on the endothelial cell. So the last example that I want to discuss is how a naive T or B cell gets into the lymph node and can do their bar hopping. So as you have learned, the T and B cells are hanging around in the lymph node, but they are always going to wait if they're going to be activated, if they can clonally expand to become an effector T or B cell, if they find their antigen where they can react to. But if they don't, they're going to just go on to the next lymph node and to the next kind of dating bar. If they find there their cognate antigen where they can react with. So how do these naive T cells get from lymph node to lymph node? This is the same process called extravasation, which again includes the steps rolling, activation, and adhesion. There's just slightly other molecules involved. So first of all, the first difference is that this time you're not talking about an interaction between an endothelial cell and a white blood cell. Now this time we talk about the high endothelial venule, because remember these are the specialized endothelial cells that are going to bring the naive T or B cell into the lymph node. And so this time you have again for the first rolling step an interaction between the selectin and this sugary mucin cam. But this time the selectin is on the lymphocyte, on the T or B cell. That's why it's called L-selectin. And so again, L-selectin always going to interact with mucin cam, but this time it's just the other way around. Mucin cam is now expressed on the high endothelial venule. They also use other chemokines. The T naive T or B cell has a CCR7 receptor, and it's going to react with its ligand. And then for the adhesion process, for this tight interaction, we have fortunately the exact same mechanism that we discussed for the neutrophil. Again, we have an interaction generally with an integrin um, interacting with an Ig cam, and this time it's the exactly same molecule. It's an LFA1 on the naive T or B cell interacting with an I cam on the high endothelial venule. So this is how the naive T or B cell can get from lymph node to lymph node to see if they can find the antigen that would activate and clonally expand them. This concludes the video on extravasation.